Hello everybody, this is Tony Turner and welcome to the Market Now as of about noon Eastern on Friday, September 28th. Well, U.S. stocks reversed earlier losses to trade higher to, so far today, helped by gains in energy and healthcare companies. U.S. consumer spending increased steadily in August, supporting expectations of solid economic growth in the third quarter, while a measure of underlying inflation remained at the Federal Reserve's 2% target for a fourth straight month. And on that note, let's go on to three charts that could give us some insight into the week to come. As we usually do, we first look at a daily chart of the S&P 500 spider, symbol SPY. As you all know, this is the exchange traded fund that closely follows our benchmark S&P 500 index. Now, as it has been, currently the SPY is remaining in a delightful uptrend and on September 20th made a new all-time closing high at $293.58. That's about $29.35 on the S&P 500 itself. Now, when I captured this chart today, the SPY was trading off those highs at $290.96. Nearby price support comes in here, and if you can see today, the SPY is just sitting on top of that 200-day moving average, which comes in at 290.16. It's just sitting atop that, kind of struggling with this today. And as we can see, you may be able to see if you look closely enough, the 20-day moving average here is no longer rising higher. It's actually kind of moving horizontally now, so we want to keep an eye on that and see uh, if the SPY can stay above it and if this moving average can continue higher. It's a pretty tight moving average, we'll have to see. If the SPY breaks through it, it always has support here at price support at 288 and it has the 50-day moving average coming in at $286.70. That's more potential support for the SPY. We also have this uptrend line coming in at 285, more potential support for the SPY, and of course the 200-day moving average coming down here at 275. If we look down at the RSI here, we see it's come off its overbought zone that it was in a week and change ago. It's a little more neutral now at 57. Kind of interesting though, even though the SPY rose up to make a new all-time high a week and change ago, the MACD said, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed at all. Uh, of course, it's a slower moving trend following indicator, but it didn't even look up. It just said the heck with it went back to sleep. Now, you may not be able to see here uh, on your screen, but the signal line for the MACD has actually fallen below the MACD line, a very, very slight negative, just saying, again, the MACD is not impressed with current moves. And we'll have to see uh, if the SPY then can, again, continue. If it has to continue lower, it's got plenty of potential support. Or can it move back up and uh, move back up and move over this 293 and change all-time high? Can it move up to 294 and keep going? We will have to see what the coming week brings. And so keep an eye on the SPY. Again, if it starts down, if it falls below the 50-day moving average and or even this trend line, uh, then I need to become, and we all need to become, a little more conservative in our trading and investing actions. All right, our next chart here is one we look at again, the PowerShares QQQ. As you all know, this ETF closely follows the NASDAQ 100 index which is the top non-financial uh, stocks by market cap in the NASDAQ stock market. Now, of course, the big dudes in the QQQ are stocks like companies like Amazon, Apple, Netflix, uh, Facebook, which is having a real rough time right now, and probably one of the reasons the Qs can't seem to move higher here. Facebook's been a drag recently for sure. Now, like the SPY, the QQQ has been moving in an uptrend, but it's more volatile. It hasn't stayed above its 20-day moving average. It's been moving up and down between the 50-day moving average 
and this pretty nice neat trend line or channel line that I've drawn connecting the highs that have um, taken place since April. So the QQQ, more volatile, but again using the 50-day moving average, which is now coming in here at $181.93. When I capture the Qs today, they're coming in at 185.95. The RSI here is moving up ever so slightly following price. The MACD is just moving sideways, totally sound asleep and unimpressed with everything that's going on. So let's keep an eye on the Qs in this coming week. We'll see if it can start back up, move back over. Perhaps it's all-time highs at 186.74. Can it do that? Or does it need to take a rest as we move into October? And again, if the Qs start down, break below their trend line in the 50-day, uh, I, for one, will become much more conservative in what I'm doing and, again, maybe even take a few profits. All right, our last chart, we haven't looked at this one in quite some time. This is a daily chart of the Select Sector Spider Energy ETF. The XLE is the symbol. The XLE is, comprises about 6% of the S&P 500. Top components include Exxon, Chevron, ConocoPhillips, EOG Resources, and Occidental Petroleum. Now, as we look left on this chart, we see that the XLE dove with all, although this one did it real dramatically, dove with everybody else back in the first part of the year. Then it started moving sideways, trading in a pretty tight range here between, say, 66, 65, 66, and 68. Then when the price of oil started up, the XLE dramatically rose back up to uh, a new recent all-time high here at $79.14. Now, that's not an all-time high. That's a, a relative new high. Then, as oil prices began to waver, the XLE fell and moved sideways right about with, with oil prices, dropped down in August, then actually drove, but fell down to its 200-day moving average, the black line you see here, uh, moved back up, rallied back up. The weak hands got shuffled out here with this retracement and retest of the lows just down below 72. And then the double, the double bottom actually uh, was legalized this Monday. Uh, the, the breaking over resistance here at 75.50 this Monday broke up and out of it, confirming the double bottom pattern, which is bullish, and then trading sideways for a few days. Now, oil is starting up today. And it, or the XLE, I, well, oil is too, starting up today. The XLE is as well. We see this trend line, this channel line coming down overhead, part of a triangle that I've noted here. And we see, what we want to see in the coming week is if the XLE can continue to move up, it closed today, or I should say it's trading today when I captured this chart at $76.46. I want to see in the coming week if it can move up to maybe 77, stay positive. Uh, now, how I'm going to use I'm going to use something as a crystal ball here. I'm going to use the United States Oil Fund, the USO. It is a tradable. It's a fund that follows an index of West Texas Intermediate Crude uh, contracts, futures contracts. If And you can get it on your screen easily. It is a tradable. If the USO, which represents the price, it's not, it doesn't show you the price of oil, but it shows you the direction it's trading. If the USO can continue to move higher in the coming week, then I may, and of course the XLE should go with it if it does, then um, I may add shares, probably will add shares of the XLE to my trading portfolio. My initial protective stop will be a close beneath the 50-day moving average, which currently comes in at $74.82. Now, if anybody is saying, hey, Tony, that stop is way too close for me, I like it. But if you want a further away one, move down to 74 or a close below the 200-day, which comes in now at 73.23. Okay, but I would definitely, as volatile as oil and the XLE can get, I would definitely be using a trailing stop once I entered, if I entered this play.
Okay, and the MACD here, uh, the MACD line is above the black. The signal line, I should say, is above the MACD line, and it's rising ever so slightly just over the zero line. Okay, so you might want to keep an eye on the XLE in the coming week. And now for the coming week's economic reports. But first, please join us this coming Monday, October 1st, for our next session of Tony's Market Club. We talk about which side of the market to trade, have a mini trading lesson, and I'll give you stocks and ETFs that may become ripe for high potential trades. This is a low-priced, high-value opportunity for you to learn more about the market, become a smarter trader, and make more money. So please join us. If you can't attend our live session, no problem. The recording of our session is available just a few minutes after the session ends to all of our members. For more information and to join, just go to Tony'sMarketClub.com. And now for the coming week's economic reports. On Monday, we have the ISM Manufacturing Index. That comes out once a month. That's important. On Tuesday, we have auto and truck sales. Wednesday, we have the ADP employment change, as well as ISM services and our usual crude inventories. On Thursday, we have our usual jobless claims and our usual natural gas inventories. On Friday, maybe the most important economic report of the week, we will have our usual monthly non-farm payrolls with the all-important unemployment rate. Again, join us for Tony's Market Club this coming Monday. Don't miss out on this terrific opportunity to raise your trading skills and your trading profits. Until next week, keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now.